Well, this is the VCAR Specialist Maths Exam 1 2014 in the state of Victoria, Australia. And these work solutions are just my unofficial work solutions. They're nothing to do with VCAR. They're not official in any way, shape or form. So, let's get going and see what I did with this exam. Question 1, guys. Uh, consider the vector a, which is root 3i minus j minus root 2k, a fairly ordinary looking vector, where i, j and k, of course, are unit vectors in the positive directions of the x, y and z axes, respectively. All that's pretty normal. So find the unit vector in the direction of a. Well, that's a nice, easy question to start off with, isn't it? So um, the magnitude of a, which is what this modulus represents, would be the square root of the various coefficients added up like that. It's Pythagoras' theorem in three dimensions, guys, and you would be familiar with that. So that comes to the square root of 3 plus 1 plus 2, which is the square root of 6. Therefore, a hat, which means a unit vector in the a direction, would be that particular vector, which is root 6 units long, divided by root 6. So now it's one unit long, but in the same direction. Yes, and put a box around that. And we've got our first mark. OK, part B. Find the acute angle that vector A makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. So let's go for that. So if we dot the vector A with i, that's the unit vector in the x-direction, we get this. Now, you know how we get that, don't you? You just multiply this i coefficient of the A vector by the coefficient of, the, of this vector here, which just happens to be... 1i, and you get root 3 times 1, and that's root 3. Now, we've got to make sure we can find the acute angle that A makes with the positive direction of the x-axis, and the way that we do that is we use the other definition of the vector dot product, which is the magnitude of A times the magnitude of I times cos of the angle between them. Okay, so root 3 is going to be root 6 times 1, times cos theta, as I've showed you there, and we can just simply solve that for cos theta, which is going to be 1 over root 2, and that gets us an angle of da -da -da -da, pi on 4 radians, okay? That little c up there just denotes radians, but you don't have to put that in, guys, they just understand that. All right, so that's uh, question 1b done, and we've got our two marks. Okay, part c, the vector b this time which is that thing there with an m pronumeral coefficient for the j component. Uh, that's what that is. Given that vector b is perpendicular to a, find the value of m. So if a equals that, and b was what we've just seen up here, therefore the vector dot product will be the product of the various corresponding coefficients of the i, j and k components respectively. So it's 2 root 3 times root 3 plus m times negative 1 minus 5 times minus root 2. Clean that up a bit, you get 2 times 3 minus m plus 5 root 2, and of course that has to equal uh, 6 plus 5 root 2 minus m, and that has to equal in turn 0, because they are perpendicular. The dot product is 0 for perpendicular vectors, and therefore 0 equals 6 plus 5 root 2 minus m, and therefore just solving it for m, guys, is as easy as pi. Uh, it's going to be that, 6 plus 5 root 2. Okay, you happy? Great. Let's move on. Question 2. We've got a vector question, another vector question, but it's just a little bit different, this one. It's a parametric one. Position vector of a particle at time t is greater than or equal to zero is given by this little beastie. So this is the position, that's the x component in terms of time, that's the y component in terms of time. Show that the Cartesian equation of the path followed by this particle is uh, that. So part a, uh, x equals t minus 2 equation 1 and y equals t squared minus 4t plus 1, that's equation 2. What we have to do now to get the Cartesian equation, which is equation of y in terms of x, we have to eliminate the parameter, which in this case is the t, the third party in all of this. So what we can do is substitute t equals x plus 2 from equation 1 into equation 2, and then we get this. Y is therefore x plus 2 all squared instead of t squared, minus 4 times x plus 2 instead of t plus 1, and then if we just multiply that out and just clean it all up, 
that's going to cancel out. That's very nice, isn't it? It looks like x squared plus 4 minus 8. That'll get you uh, minus 4. Minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. Ah, yes, that's what we had to do. Excellent. All right, uh, now, part B for this question. Sketch the path followed by the parting on the axes below, labelling all important features. All right, we know, just to summarise, that y is x squared minus 3, don't we? And we know that x and y, in terms of t, are these things, because that is, that is relevant, particularly to the x, because we've got to know what part of the Cartesian graph we start on for our journey, OK, of this particle. So... All right, when t is naught, that's what I'm about now, guys. I'm just trying to find out where we started off. Uh, x would be minus 2 from this equation here, and y would be this thing, but with 0 substituted in, which just gets us plus 1. Yeah, so therefore, the motion starts at minus 2, 1 coordinate points, x and y, and then as t increases, you've sort of get a bit of, you've got to get a bit of a feel for what happens. As t increases, x increases, as x equals t minus 2. So all of that makes perfect sense, all right? Now let's sort our x and y intercepts out for this graph before we try and sketch it. So for the graph of y equals x squared minus 3, the y-intercept is going to be 0 and minus 3. That's x comma y. So uh, x is naught, y is minus 3. And the x-intercept will occur if you set y equal to 0. Uh, you solve that for x, you'll get x is plus or minus root 3, okay? So I think we're ready to sketch the graph now, so let's go and do that. There's a bit of scale, you need to put some scale on the graph guys, and there it is. We start here, and here is our one x-intercept, there's the other x-intercept, there's the y-intercept, and it starts here, and goes like that, like a beautiful little parabola that it is. You don't have to really put an arrow on there, but I just like to, because um, it just looks better. That's the way the particle's moving. Um, as long as you put that point there and label it and do all your intercepts correctly as coordinate points and this, I think you'd be pretty right, guys. All right, you like that one? Very nice. Part C, find the speed of the particle, all right? That's all right, when t equals 1. So we know that the uh, position vector is this one. So what we've got to do is take the derivative of that to get the velocity vector and then find the magnitude of the velocity vector because the magnitude of velocity is speed. So there is uh, the derivative of the position vector giving us the velocity vector here. Now, the derivative of this little beast is 1, with respect to t that is, and this one here is going to be 2t minus 4. So there's our velocity vector, guys. Yes? Happy with that? Great. So therefore, if we substitute t is 1, which is what we're supposed to be doing here, you will get that. Now, all we've got to do now is find the magnitude of that vector, okay? There it is, uh, Pythagoras' theorem again. So it's going to be square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared, which will be the square root of 5. That's very, very good. Let's uh, do another question now. This is question 3 of the 8 questions on this paper. Let f be a function of a complex variable, okay, complex numbers this time, defined by this here. Yes, looks pretty normal. I'm noticing the real coefficients, so you. Real coefficients, which means that the conjugate root theorem applies. So, uh, we're given that z equals i is a solution of this. Write down a quadratic factor of f of z. Well, that's, that's really great, because the conjugate root theorem applies there, because the coefficients of the polynomial are all real. So, therefore... We know that if z minus i, and that's what I'm, what I'm saying, if, if z equals i is a root, then z minus i must be a factor, then z plus i is also a factor, isn't it? Yes, it is. And therefore, the quadratic factor we would be looking for here to get our two marks would be that. Uh, I would just put it like that. z squared minus uh, i squared, z squared minus i squared, difference of two squares, which would be z squared plus 1, because, of course i squared is minus 1 and therefore minus i squared would be plus 1 and that's my answer. Yes, okay. Now this is going to be leading somewhere else now. We've got our quadratic factor. Here's part b. Given that the other quadratic factor of f of z has the form this, uh, another quadratic-y thing, find all the solutions of the polynomial is set equal to 0. 
in Cartesian form. Oh, I think that's going to be pretty straightforward, don't you? Three mark question. Here comes our marks. Uh, B, all right, let's go for it. That's the polynomial, just rewritten for you. And that equals, now, it equals our quadratic factor, which we got in the last part, times another quadratic factor in here. Now, guys, I don't like polynomial long division, so I like to do it the easy way, uh, which is what I'm about to show you. The front term here comes from the product of the two front terms in the brackets, all right? And the back term here, this plus 6, comes from the back terms in these brackets. So it becomes very obvious to us what the front term's going to be in that second bracket. It'll be z squared. And it becomes also very obvious what the, the back term, the rear term, in that second bracket's going to be. It's going to be plus 6. Now, all we've got to do, guys, is work out the middle term. I usually call it alpha, alpha z, okay? Now, watch this. Um, if we expand the z term on the right-hand side, you have a look at this expanding the z term. Now you think about it. Where are you going to get a z term from? z to the fourth, no good. Z alpha z cubed, no good. 6z squared, no good. So let's go with this term now. Plus z squared, no good. Plus alpha z, yes, bonanza. Plus 6. So there's only one term here in the in the z variety. It's just alpha z, isn't it? Right? That's right. Now, if you have a look at the left-hand side of this, where is the z term? There it is. So therefore, it becomes very obvious to us, guys, that alpha must equal minus 4. Yes? Wasn't that easy? Beats long uh, polynomial long division any time, I think. So now what we've got to do now is set about factorising this and finding the linear factors and therefore the corresponding linear solutions that apply if this f of z thing is set equal to 0. And we already know these two. They're going to be uh, z is plus or minus i, aren't they? Yes, for this quadratic factor here. All right, let's go for it. That's very easy. We can complete the square. So that line there is the same as z plus i, z minus i times. Now, z squared minus 4z. Now, half of 4 is 2, 2, 2 is a 4, and then plus another 2 to get us up to our 6. But this bit here is now a perfect square, and we can just flesh that out a little bit more like this. Okay, that's the same two linear factors there as we had in the line above. We've got z minus 2 all squared now. Uh, plus 2, okay? Plus 2 is basically minus root 2i all squared, okay? that You think about that. If you squared that term, you'd get 2i squared, and it's minus 2i squared, which will get you plus 2. You happy? All right, now we're going to hit it with the old difference of two squares factorization now. Go in for the kill, and we get that. Okay, now, we're, uh, we're very close to the end now. So if f of z equals 0, we've got z equals... Okay, null factor law will demonstrate to us that z could be... This one would be minus i, this one would give us a plus i, this one would give us 2 plus root 2i, this one would give us 2 minus root 2i, and Bob's your uncle. Okay, guys? Very good. Uh, let's keep going now. This is another question now. Question 4. Uh, find the gradient of the normal to the curve defined by y equals this fairly dodgy looking thing. Minus 3e e to the 3x e to the y. Oh, goodness. At the point 1 and minus 3. Well, I can see some implicit differentiation throughout the nation if ever I saw some. Can't you? All right, well, come on, let's uh, fasten our seatbelts and do it. There's y. Now, we're going to do dy dx. Now, <laughs> look at that. So minus 3, and then put the whole thing in brackets, because we've got some product rule here. We've got some product rule here, and there's a bit of chain rule in this, in this one here, and also a bit of chain rule in this one too, by the way. So let's go for it now. Minus 3 times. Now, the left term, e to the 3x, times the derivative of the right-hand term, which is e to the y times dy dx. You get that, don't you? Okay, plus the right term, which is e to the y, times the derivative of the left-hand term, which is 3e to the 3x. All right, 
You happy with that? All right, good, let's do the next line. That gets us getting rid of the bracket now and being careful with the signs. Minus 3e to the 3x e to the y dy dx minus 9e to the y e to the 3x. Uh, all right, now, we're well on the way now. We've just got to uh, get dy dx happening here, aren't we? So we're going to take this term over to that side and then factor out dy dx and then we're nearly there. So there we are, dy dx into 1 came from here, plus this business here, right, is equal to this bit here, which is left on the right-hand side. Now we're going to divide both sides by all of this, all of this, guys, and we're going to get, there we are. Beautiful, isn't it? Truly beautiful. Now, where are we in all this? Oh, we've got to find the gradient of the normal to the curve. Now, that's a trap. I wonder... How many people that would trap? Let's substitute uh, x and y in first, guys, uh, and see what dy dx is for that specific point, 1 and minus 3. So here we go. Now, we get that, don't we? Let's just see if I got that right. That's minus 9 times e to the minus 3, because y is minus 3, times e to the 3x, and x was 1. That's right. That looks right. Uh, over 1 plus 3 times e to the 3. Yes, x was 1. Uh, and e to the y, y was minus 3. That's all right. Now, do you know what I'm going to do now for my next trick? Yes, that is just 1, because that is e cubed over e cubed. Yes, and the same thing on the denominator. Look at that. Goodness gracious, how simple. So the answer becomes minus 9 over 1 plus 3, which is minus 9 over 4, but now wait, there's more. They want the gradient of the normal to the curve. That is the gradient of the tangent to the curve, guys. So, the old m1 times m2 equals minus 1 trick, we need that, and you'll find that the gradient of the normal will be the positive reciprocal of that, in order, in order that that m1 times m2 equals minus 1 rule can be satisfied. And there's the gradient of the normal, it's plus 4, over 9. Okay? Very, very good. Now, question 5 I'm going to do in the next video. So, um, have a little rest and then have a look at the next video. Okay? See you soon.